YouTube, Perilous 3D here, how's it going? Just finished a workout, I've actually got uh, two more sets to go. The hair on this guy, eh? It's been a little while since I've done the non-video game related or uh, reviews, unboxings, that kind of stuff. The usual stuff I do on my channel. At one point, for you loyal, faithful followers, I had a, a series up on my channel called A Journey Back to Health. It seems like forever ago now, this is a few years ago, at least two or three years, even four years at this point, jeez. Time goes by fast. I had a playlist on there with a whole bunch of videos. I was documenting everything, being super scientific about it. And I decided that that's not the right approach for me. I got through about three or four months, got really fit, put on some good muscle, lost some weight. I wanted to make another video like this, get that out there, get the ball rolling on more like health type videos. Uh, I don't know if my channel is the right place for it, but I have really nowhere else to post these type of videos. So it's going to have to go on this channel. So you fitness fanatics out there, I'm looking to you for some advice. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there on my subscriber list. Um, let me know what you think of this. Let me know your pointers and your tips. And I'll make sure to get you a nice uh, shout out on a future video. But I want to share with you my exercise routine. As I said, it's a little bit less stringent, I guess you could say. A little bit less scientific. A little bit less statistical and, and measured. And more of just a going with my gut. Going with what works. Dropping what doesn't work. And then just using my individual body type and my, my fitness level to really work with me instead of against me. So I will share with you the number of sets I do, the number of reps, my basic exercises, which don't really include any leg exercises at this point. For legs, I mostly, I'm actually neglecting it, but I'm mostly doing uh, running and jogging. It's pretty much it, honestly. There's an ab workout I do that has a little bit of leg involved, but not a lot. The way I figure it, if I can get my upper body more in shape, I'll have more room after that to uh, to work in my leg workouts. But I'm honestly not too worried about the legs because I had I do have strong legs and they're they're relatively still in good shape. So I'm not focusing as much on the legs. And like I said, I will get some workout from the running and jogging. Maybe not as much as I'd like, but enough to stay fit. So first what I'll do generally is I'll have a nice 5-10 minute stretch warming up phase of my workout and uh, that involves just basic stretching, you know, different uh, arm stretches, pulling, pushing. I really don't know a lot about warming up and it's, it's a bit of a controversy online. A lot of mixed opinions of whether you should warm up or not, the type of warm up you should do. Some people say just go into your uh, resistance training right away and do like a lighter set to start as a warm up. Other people say no, it's very important to get completely warmed up. Speaking of warming up, some people say that it's actually better to have a warm environment when you're working out and when you're stretching as opposed to a colder one. Apparently with colder rooms or, or wind and stuff like that or even a fan, the risk of uh, pulling something and injury is higher. I don't know if that's true or not. You, you guys can tell me. After I do about a 5-10 minute warm up, I will jump right into push-ups. I've got an app on my phone right now that's called 100 Push-Ups. Highly recommend it for anybody that's looking to do 100 push-ups a day. Or just generally, uh, if, even if you can't do one push-up, they gradually increase in intervals until you can do 100. So you might start off with doing, say, three sets of one push-up. And then once you do that, they'll move you up to doing four sets of five push-ups. Or, you know, they gradually work you up to it. And it's, it's, it's a nice gradual ascension. It's not like a, a sharp increase. There was only a couple occasions where I wasn't able to, to do the full set. And... Um, what I do is I just go to failure, like on this last one I did. I today reached another milestone and did 125 push-ups, not in a row, <laughs> there's no way. But the last set, right, it was something like 13, 13, I wanna say 12, 12, uh, maybe 10, I don't know the exact number anyway, but after the 10 was like a 30. And, and I thought like, holy crap, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do 30 push-ups in a row. And of course I wasn't able to. So what I do in that case is I do just go until failure and then I do the rest on my knees. And then at least that way I'm finishing it. I'm not stopping or I'm not splitting them up in two because it's important to do the whole the whole set in one go. So if you can't till the end and that, that goes, you know, for somebody that might be do, trying to do five. If you can't do five push-ups, don't be embarrassed. I was there not that long ago. I couldn't even do two. So, and now I'm up to doing, I can do maybe like 20 sometimes in a row. The point is, I guess, is to just finish. Don't stop. Don't let your heart rate go down. Just keep going. If you have to finish them on your knees, then finish them on your knees, you know. Even if that's too much, just take a small 5, 10 second break. And I don't want to give out advice here, guys, because I'm actually looking for advice. But I know there's a lot of beginners out there that might be watching this too. And I'm kind of between the beginner to intermediate phase, so I feel like 
the stuff that I've learned I need to share. But anyway, I don't want this video to be too long. Going right into it, after I do my uh, warm up, I go right into my push ups. I'll do what I'm, I'm up to 125 now, so I'll do my 125 push ups, give myself maybe a two minute break, and then I go into doing some pull ups. So there's my pull up bar. I'll do as many as I can. This, I'm not counting them how many I'm doing, I'm just going to failure. But I'll do, um, I think I start off with these actually. So I'll grab it like this on both sides. I'll do as many of those as I can to failure. Um, while I'm cooling down from that, I will grab my yoga ball. I've got a yoga ball here. Uh, a couple of them actually, ones for, for my kids. But I'll grab the yoga ball and I'll take one of those weighted um, medicine balls, the small one. And I'll just put that behind my head or I'll put it up um, above me and just kind of like push up with it. I'll do two, two arms straight, one to the side, go straight again, switch hands to the side. So it's always side, center, side, center, side, center, so that I work the side abs as well as the center abs whatever you call them. I don't, I'm not good with technical terms. So yeah, I'll alternate between pull-ups and ab exercises. I'll do three of each. Once I do the um, this method here, whatever you want to call it, I'll switch and do the underhand grip. Do as many of those as I can to failure. And then go back to my ball, do some more ab exercises. And then I'll grab them here since my grip's a little too uh, narrow here to do the overhands. I'll, I'll do it kind of on the outside. These are really hard to do for me. I'm not sure why. I can do maybe like three or four of those. And uh, it's kind of disappointing when I go to the park with my kids. They're all playing on the playground equipment and I can't even, I can't do those like I see people doing online or on videos all the time. And it looks like it's a great shoulder workout, but I just can't do them. Not only that, but on my left arm for some reason, right here, right in the middle where my elbow is, on the inside of my elbow, I've got a tendon there that really hurts when I try to do those for some reason. So I try to go easy. I don't want to hurt myself and not be able to do my workouts anymore. So I'm going really easy on those. But once I do three sets of the pull-ups, three sets of the balls for ab exercises, I will switch to doing some uh, bench presses. I've got about 85 pounds on there, which I know you buffs out there are not. You're going to laugh at me for only putting up 85 pounds, but it's what I can do. It's what I can do, and I'm actually proud of myself because I started off at 60 and I'm at 85 now. Actually, no, I started off at 50, including the bar, and now I'm at uh, 85. Almost ready. Um, I can do more than 12 now. From what I understand, 5 to 12 um, reps is where you want to be. So I can do more than 12 now. I'm almost ready to add some more weight to that, but I'm not because I also do Arnold curls. I'll do my bench presses to failure, which is over 12 now. I can do about 16, 17, so that's definitely too light for, for me. So about 100 would be where I want to be, maybe 95, 90, something like that, go up slowly. But the reason I'm not adding more weight to it just yet is because I'm somewhat close to 12, maybe not at 17, but I also do Arnold curls with that same weight. And right now I can do about six. So I'm waiting to get my Arnold curls up, my reps up a little higher before I add more weight on there so that I don't have to keep switching the weight back and forth. It's not really uh, a matter of laziness, maybe it is. It's more for the fact that I do my workouts on my lunch and I don't have a lot of time and that's really literally the only time I have in the day to, to get these done. I don't want to do it at night at like 9 or 10 p.m. and then not be able to sleep. So on my lunch I have an hour and I have to eat also and, and usually do some chores. So I give myself maybe 30 to 45 minutes for my workout. And I don't want to be fumbling around and, and changing my weights back and forth. So that's kind of my rationale there. After I'm done doing my bench presses and my Arnold curls, I usually do two sets of each. And by that point, I'm just, I'm usually pretty zonked. Yeah, sometimes after, after I'm done that, which I haven't done today, I'll need to do some of those too, as well as the finish my sets of uh, um, bench presses and Arnold curls. I've got one more of each. But uh, if I've got some energy left, which usually I do, I'll grab my dumbbells down there, the 20s. And uh, for my push-ups, I have a uh, those push-up things, by the way. I don't know what they're called. Grips, whatever. For my dumbbells, my free weights, what I'll do is I'll just do some basic curls, two hands at once. I notice a lot of people doing two at once. Not sure what the difference is. Maybe just time-saving. Do them both at the same time. Sometimes I'll alternate between doing some of those, some curls, and then going back to doing push-ups or some other. I'll also do some tricep. Um, these guys here with the 20 pounders with two hands those reps are getting pretty high though So I'm gonna have to find some heavier weights or get some more dumbbells and 25 pounders would be good So that's pretty much what I do for my other ab exercise. I use the 10x um, five minute ab workout, which is more cardio than anything honestly, but it, it works really well. It doesn't burn 
my abdominals as much as my ab, ab exercise does. So I think what I'll do is I'll keep alternating back and forth between the 10X and my own personal ab exercise because that seems to be working out for me. So yeah, in a nutshell, kind of a longer video than I wanted to make. But I, I really need uh, the community out there, you guys, to let me know what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? What can I do to improve? What can I do to see faster results? I'm all about the hard work. I don't mind putting in the hard work. I'm not seeing the results as fast as I would like to, and I'm sure that's a common complaint from people. But I want to cut down on body fat. Right now, I'm at about 175, 180 pounds, something like that. I'd like to get back down to a consistent 160, 165, which is still in the healthy range. My body fat count is probably like easily 23, 20, 24% right now. So that could come down. That could come down easily 10%. And I'd still be well within the, the healthy range. Uh, my goal is to reach 15% body fat, so that would be pretty close to that. But I know that even at 15%, you're just, just going to start to see the definition, especially around the abs, since men tend to carry their weight more in the gut. I don't have very much body fat, but it's all here. It's all here. And it kind of sucks because I want to see the hard work that I've been putting in the last couple months. So that's it. You uh, aficionados out there, please... Share your advice with me. I would love if you could let me know in the comments, again, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, what I can improve on, what I can maybe add to my workout, what I can take out. I just need your advice. I, I need some advice because I'm just going by instinct here. I'm looking for that guidance from the rest of the community to let me know how I can improve. And more importantly than anything, to be optimal with my time, with my workout time, so that I'm maximizing my gains and... Um, maximizing in my fat loss. Here I didn't talk about cardio. Once I'm done doing my resistance training here, I usually go for a run. One lap around my woods is approximately a quarter mile. So if I do four laps, that's one mile. And right now I can do about five or six laps. So that's about a mile and a half, not nonstop. I'll go until I, I'm exhausted and then I'll walk until I start getting my breath back. Not enough to let the heart rate drop too much and then start going again. Stop, walk, run, walk, run, walk. That's pretty much what I do for my cardio. I got some nice hiking shoes and with really good grips on the bottom that are excellent for jogging or running. So that has really helped to prevent injury and to just have more grip on the ground. So that's pretty much what I do for cardio. Um, another thing I love to do for cardio that I haven't been able to do in uh, recent times is um, boxing. I do a lot of shadow boxing and I like to hit the heavy bag and really dance around and move and um, when I was doing that before, a few years ago, when I was doing the journey back to health, that was just amazing cardio. I couldn't believe how much of a workout that was. It, at the end of that, I was just winded, like, and it felt good. It felt good, almost more so than running. So that's pretty much what I do for cardio. The 10X has some jumping jacks and different cardios in it as well, but it's only five minutes. It's hard to really count that for anything. But, you know, as they say, any workout is better than the best workout that you don't do. So that's kind of, it's been my mentality and my mantra. So that is it, my friends. Thank you so very much for watching. Bit of an unusual video for me, different than what I usually do, but hopefully you appreciate that. And again, as I said, there are those exercise pros, resistance training pros, even cardio pros. Please let me know in the comments. Send me a private message even, or contact me on Facebook. Let me know uh, what I can do to improve, and I'll make a follow-up video. I'll be sure to give you a shout-out in there and share your advice as well as my newfound advice combined with what you share with me to the rest of the community and maybe we can build something from there get some open dialogue going and uh, maybe i'll start another playlist or another series of videos around uh, health journeying back to it there's also the spiritual aspect of health as well which i feel is, uh, is important so if, if any of you out there have uh, some advice to share on that even let me know meditation communing with nature all that stuff i'm down with that stuff so let me know anyway thanks for watching again my friends take care be well and i will catch you on on the next one. Bye-bye.